Johnny Boy, let's go to work! It's rematch time. Is it revenge time for G2? You know, I think they could run away with this, or the crowd is going absolutely bananas for the Just tonight for G2. These two teams have such history together, but it's history that G2 will not want to repeat. Against each other in this very arena in the Grand Finals two years ago, BDS not only won it, they dismantled their opponents. Oh. That demo very much the way to do it. Drowning now over the top. But it is well covered by Beast Mode. The Drally looking so comfortable on the pitch and all weekend. You forget that this guy's having his rookie season right now, but you're going to. This is not going to be a repeat of two years ago where G2 came 
Mount Flat didn't get going until much later in the series. They're aggressive, they're attacking, and more importantly, they're trusting each other's touches in offense. And they just oh! Completely for them. 
Entirely for you guys. As uh, Drally gets it and sorts it out today. Yeah, just going to have a quick hit set slot. And then he's going to be back and look at our ATV Grand Finals. So you get the feeling that this one has been waiting for a result like that one. It's been two years of stewing on that result. What gave you that idea? Nothing whatsoever. That might be the volume that we can hear <laughs> behind the stage and behind the arena. It has been also very loud, and if we keep going the way it has been, we might have just seen the start. Hey, no, we knew it was going to be a party if G2 made the final, but if G2 lead in the final, okay, now we're talking. This is entertainment. Can BDS respond, or will G2 do what teams have been used to doing in World Finals as of late and completely run away with it? Dickie's library. He's died before, he's given the hope, and he might still very well do it again. Let's go for Game 2! G2 still walked in, laser focused on stage. Have a bit of defending to do to start things off, but it's automatic for Daniel. Catches the overhead and then carries it to a minute 50. So, what can BDS respond with in game number two? Or do we maintain the atomic show? They've got to avoid his demos. They've got to avoid beast mode outplays. They've got to avoid Daniel just in general. There is a lot of work. And BDS have got to get covered. Right now, the first bit of that is just getting the ball out the right side of the field. Off the blackboard. Nobody available. Daniel chose defense first. G2 just have a better read on the game right now. You can see a lot of the races to the ball. They're starting off for BDS players sideways, backwards. G2 are the team who are coming in at the right time, facing the ball and jumping at it with momentum. But clear. Monkey Moon dusts into that one. Back out yet again. Monkey Moon. Nice three-way passing play. They just couldn't quite find a topic. This is a little bit better here from BDS. They did just about stop the bleeding towards the end of the last game. That's a massive block, but oh, if you want BDS dare go. Barley back into the midfield. Can't get any further, Beast will take over. They see BDS are playing scared as Exotic tried to 50-50 the ball. Both Monkey Man and Drally were facing away from it so many times. They're getting caught backwards to the plate. No one playing for that aggressive touch, that positive outcome. Beast mode on the backboard. He's got so many options with right hand side, but he might go by himself. What reset? Has another second to the fight. Now Monkey Moon tries to do it himself, but now this is really awkward for both teams. Monkey Moon's low on boost. G2 will know that, however. And to just dive forward, see what they can get. He stole the 100 away as he went for the ball there, now turning. Fancy rotation, Monkey Moon, but look at the speed of Daniel from a dead stop straight up into the air. And now with a reset, turning defense into attack. Monkey Moon with some support. Oh, 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 o
to shovel the ball into the net. The phenomenal there by Dino, realizing the what was happening, committed to the ball so that they would have two defenders covering different angles. Two players committed. Again, BDS happy to send two at the same time, but that's past one, back to the corner. BDS, their best opportunity, but can they find a way to get their first goal? Scoreless after five in Big One G2. Um, got a strong match here, but they are testing. BDS, we're putting up more resistance in the second game. Minute 20 to go. There's a high ball for Daniel to play. He's going to first touch to himself. Exotic stops him. Now here comes Drowley. No boost, but will G2 know that? Looks like they've got him sussed out. Yeah, BDS just keep playing the ball to play. It's always about 40 or less, so it does really limit what play they can come up with. Again, the passing has been phenomenal for BDS. Can they get the result? That's going to drop down. Monkey Moon leaves it! And it's taken away from Exotic. Yeah, missed the ceiling read there, Monkey Moon. Didn't get the right prediction on the bounce. I think he would have been first to the ball there. Final minute now, G2. In an awkward spot, Daniel does well to find his teammate Atomic on the back wall, who has missed though. The yes, attack isn't going to come too quickly, but G2 are starting to make some slight mistakes. That's another way we're touched by G2 in defense. This is more of what we saw to close out the show yesterday. Two teams finding it very difficult to get goal scoring opportunities. Atomic is in the back side of the field. Can he find a bump on his way through? No, he avoids it. Again, monkey move to exhaust. Oh, that's gonna be too hard. Now G2 is a great way, but Demo doesn't have them. Everybody's got rotation midfield here. It's a continuous battle in one spot. 50-50 after 50-50. G2 might get the last chance of regulation. Trally with the overhead clear. Send it along. Daniel's gonna put it back in. And it's just ping ponging back and forth from one side to the other. Back up again. Trally with time. Two players come at the back. as well. Both teams are stretched thin, but now into the ground we go. It's overtime in the second game. Huge here for both squads. G2 might be able to demoralize BDS if they can take this overtime. Monkey Moon couldn't get past. There's Vasa! Oh! Expected from him, but he has been worth the wait. That's a 
first time, not quite what he was after, but we already know Daniel can. So he makes his plays up on the fly. As Drani claw in beast mode, he wasn't too far off. Now Daniel's opportunity, taking away from himself, but that's going to bounce out quite nicely. Shot fizzles away, and Monkey Moon happy to play it. Yeah, not the best shot there, but it's something straight towards Monkey Moon. But I love the 50 50 by Daniel before that. Daniel is been controlling so many series, been controlling so many teams in this 50 50 game. I feel like that's probably for me the one thing G2 have improved on the most since Copenhagen at the start of the season. Back now to Exotic. will happily play back. Lord has to avoid getting hit though. You already see the support player just something for G2 to keep their eye on. This time it was Monkey Moon who is now in. Just delays it. That was disgusting beast mode, but they are still in some more trouble. Will Phineas want to cut rotation? No, having to go back to run back third again. Monkeyman has tried a few of these, limited success to this point. Now, a lot of these air dribbles from BDS are coming in slow, so there is an option for G2 to break rotation, just rotate towards the ball instead of to towards the back post side of our traditional side to rotate. We'll be off the post in for a second there. It looked like we might be having a second goal for G2. Going to it up for BDS now. Monkeyman realized after the demo, so there's no point diving in. Tentative since that first goal went in. Drali back foot, he can't follow, he was bumped. Lovely touch there from Beast, but Drali still on so little, but he gets enough. BDS, as always, will just try to hold the opposing team in their own side of the field. Wait for that massive golden opportunity. Nice block shot from Monkey Moon. Well pass. Is not able to break them down. It's back out again for Drali! Yet another BDS response. Placement. Perfect for Drally. As Exotica Monkey Moon sets up the team play. It's what BDS do. When some teams will happily scamper back to their own back third. Allow G2 to have a moment. They just keep going. Wave after wave for pressure. And finally G2 broke. Atomic with Daniel in support. Daniel's gonna go to the far side. Wait to see what Exotic does. Put it behind him. Oh, G2 have got the flare at the moment, but can they get the result? Just ridiculous activity. Five beast mode rally with a tough overhead save there. It does very well to stay with the ball there. Beast mode is always that guy for G2. Turn into diet. 
Still not quite across the finish line of this game, G2. Some starting test of distance and peaceful to yet another row of the crowd. Saves the ball to the corner. It's those midfield challenges, though. G2 are smashing through them. And he has had to work from stage one. Jumps off the wall too early, and it comes 
in over his head. This is definitely G2 series. If they can keep playing like this, you can clearly see, even after the timeout, that the game has continued to play the same way. Exotic takes the ball up. He avoids Daniel Paul! Bobini has a rake it up, Shogun. This is getting a whole lot scarier for the whole fans. If Exotic's looking mechanical, if Exotic's air rolling, then BDS can be fully unleashed. And it's not the way we expected BDS to get going. For all the talk about Monkey Moon and what he was going to do, it is the other players on his team that have stepped up in this game. They've got a 2 1 lead, three minutes left. Not the best touch there from Exotic. And the last time they had a missed touch, they were scored on. But this time, they will stop it. Drowley with no boost. Jumping in the way of a save. BDS have got almost no boost on all three of their players. Monkey Moon, one of the best low boost players in the game, though. Will Shaper on the ball clear. BDS have got to get away from the whiffs, though, in defense. There have been some very poor decisions made. Well, the offense has been flicking. That's another one. Oh, my goodness. What a touch. He does. What an interception by Daniel, he saw that coming on BDS's back wall. And there just seems like nowhere is safe for BDS, no matter where they hit a ball. There's a G2 player lurking, trying to make an interception. And you know, that really makes me think that their game plan coming out of that timeout might be to remove their focus from team plays and swing it more towards solo plays. Passing against this G2 lineup just seems to be too dangerous. And they've already considered two goals straight from interceptions. It's a very, very confidence boosting way to score when you know you've got the read on the opponent. And off the wall, very difficult to create too much from that, but then we'll just hold the line. Massive attempt there to increase the lead. Oh my god, it's Daniel off the ceiling! Can it get back to the demo? Oh, come through! And the demo was also very clutch. And no accidental oil goal after the demo as well. It was just a clear ball through the smoke. G2 could not find the goal. Exotic up high, forcing G2 to commit to that high option on the air draw. G2 are going to keep on pressing. They've been so successful with their offense in this grand final. I see no reason for them to change their strategy. And it doesn't look like they're interested in doing so. They're going to put the pressure on BDS every time they can. Ceiling reset for Beast Mode. Low boost for everyone except Monkey Moon on BDS. Here's the one holding the line. Who's most ready and waiting? This is what you for their best. Find each other. There goes Beast Mode. Nice win yet again. G2 have had plenty of them, but where's the follow? And no boost for the follow there. Atomic and Daniel both searching for pads while Beast Mode won the race to the back. While Drally's low here. Has to flip from a man to get Dustin to the ball. Look at this beat of Daniel. It's a big though. Atomic comes in and that shot is just not good enough. Drally the other way. He's going to be denied by Beast Mode. G2, we've got 40 seconds to work with, still down by one. Not an idea, but the follow up was just too far away. Get plenty of time for BDS to recover. Raleigh leaves it yet again. BDS communicating the whole situation so well. Oh, oh. God. And the monster is ready to play for a world championship. Oh, look at that demo dodge from Exotic. Beast mode completely misses it. And Atomic, who was probably waiting for that demo to land, could not catch up with the shot. Brilliant by BDS. It's been individual. Now G2 have only got 25 seconds to go. Kick off strike goes their way though. BDS are all over. But they have got a player on the backboard. Atomic goes oh! the off the backboard and somehow BDS had a good read. Lovely control. G2 have got to get control of this ball and put it in the net or they will see the series tied up. I think that they have run out of time already. BDS have got it at two each. <laughs> and they're scoring for fun. One more to add insult to injury. And now, the question that everybody's wondering about G2 is do they call their time? We're, we're so scared of teams calling timeout on match point. But, I think to say that I've not heard anything about one yet, because BDS have already used theirs. So, even if D2 are going to save their timeout when they're down match point, BDS can't respond with one of their own anymore. No, I've not heard anything either from the one who has helped hands for the rest of the group bring this incredible event to Dickies Arena. 
the night. And they've got to find two more. This is a good place to start. Daniel can't quite find the block. Exotic, go for the top. Uh -oh. It's all on beast mode. Who finds the stop? He's found Daniel with a solo boost on everybody. Albinius have committed to this play, G2. Unable to really get a move on before the ball was once again. BDS is Monkey Moon. Top Garner Snipe. Oh my goodness. What a shot by Monkey Moon. What a pass. BDS just can't put a foot on offensively. For all of the flip resets, the way mechanics have developed, Monkey Moon's go to strategy has always been the same. I'm going to hit this very hard, and it's going into your net. I mean, just straight line to the ball. Absolute pig. Perfect. Uh, it's all bids by Monkey Moon. Once again, just taking the wind out of G2 sails to angle. With barely any goes, what the fuck? He almost broke the backboard for that one. G2 with a minute and 40 to work with. We almost had a flood on Aquadome. Now the reset, that line is dropping. Past the post, nothing but one. And that's a ball of the game. Not even the post. Helping G2 out in this, the most tricky of situations. Yes, looking for a fifth. They don't get it on the first try, but now they will. Durali will make it five. And if it wasn't comfortable at the start of the game, it definitely isn't now. BDS are erasing the only blemish for them in this grand finals. That game won. They remembered it, and they've gone for revenge. This is ridiculous. And it really is. We talk about the, this being the event for comebacks. BDS, after game one, had so many questions to answer, and they have just answered all of them. But this has been the event for almost fake comebacks. We've had the reverse swings. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sets up to work with here. So many uncompleted comebacks this event show good. BDS, I've got one here. A little bit of a comeback from losing game one. G2, trying to turn it around, and they've got 55, 56 seconds left, three goals, I mean it is doable. Oh, especially when you've got the kickoff, oh, right? oh, he's got punk coverage in time. Dravi holds the midfield, and might very well have been the last opportunity G2 had to get back into this game. To see a demo, Monkey Moon will be last back, just until the respawn happens. Some momentum though for G2, who well, are looking there in the last stages of this game. They do still have their timeout. And they are going to need it. Well, here goes Beast Mode. Apparently, there's challenged so well by Exotic there. You know, really good. That had to be a goal. That looked pretty good for G2, but then out of nowhere, BDS challenged them. Threatening a sixth goal. Not satisfied with the beatdown they've already applied in this fifth game. That's going to pop over to the side. Still hits the crossbar. Woodwork, not a fan of G2. To head into the final few moments of Game 5, Team BDS will have not one, but two championship points. The G2 do still have their timeout, and they've called it to the surprise of no one. This is such a difficult situation. Down two match points in the World Championship Grand Final. What can Sathu and the boys conjure up? They've not made it easy for their fans at any point throughout the old history. Why are they going to make it easy for them this time around? A Monkey Moon, third World Championship Grand Final in a row. Looking to try and become a two-time World Championship winner. Dry, looking to do what Zen did last season and go from rookie to World Championship winner. An exotic on the verge of silencing the doubters. No one can doubt you because they have to respect you and call you Mr. World Champion. Well, they've done it once already. G2 came back against Furia. Two match points down. They won game six and seven. Now they have to do it again. They're going to need every ounce of energy that you guys have got in this arena if they're going to pull it off. Been a fantastic crowd all weekend. Making noise for Team Trump. Well, I was going to say every region, almost every region, maybe not the region of France in this case.
G2, they've shown combat potential. This is possible. They just have to believe it's possible. And then they have to play their game, play their strategy, and avoid the mistakes that cost them so many goals early in game five. It's almost backwards thinking a bit away. But we're going to realize that BDS, they've already done this. G2 smashed them in game number one. BDS were able to come back and win game two. So for, for G2, they've still think, oh, well, if they can do it, so can we, surely. We can go ahead, win this game at Neo Tokyo, and go to the place where dreams are made. Champions Field or bust. There is nothing in between. G2, how much do you want it, lads? Are you able to avenge two years ago? Or do we just live in Pokemon's world? G2, BDS, let's get to it! A must win game six for G2. No other option. And they start off with the ceiling play. I think they play fit their intentions not with that. They believe in their offense, they believe in their aerial plays. But will they find a way through the best version of BDS that we've seen all week? That's been a BDS that has been a long time in the works. They have not been this good all season, but they are peaking when it matters. It's going to go all the way to the backboard. Daniel has to find a read, he's done exactly that. I'm to a little fake challenge, it's just taking control of it so easily. Love the use of pull dash there by Daniel just to stay with that ball, make it a little bit harder for BDS to get a clean touch. BDS creating their own touches in the midfield now. It's pandemonium at the halfway line. It's both teams tackle for possession. Mojimu have to go back court out the 100 boost. Only just for maybe the frame that he got over the top of it. He's going to use that boost. Get done for his troubles. Off the wall, here comes Drali. Something exotic. What an absolute show in the previous game. G2 quiet this time around. Look at the ceiling pitch. That's out to Atomic. Conchman again, there in time. Yeah, great mid coverage there by Monkey Moon. Watching that dangerous pass. The G2 are known for it. They love to pass the ball out to the mid to free jumping teammates or just teammates waiting in the middle. Now the backboard coming into play for G2. Daniel with the mid air catch, but the challenges are raining in early for BDS. Monkey Moon. He has got support, there it is! Drali's gonna put the shot wide, but oh! Boost. And Atomic had to help out! Low boost! Exotic, low, Drali boost! Drali oh! Drali scores! The G2 backed each other up on the first play. They helped each other defend. But BDS still keep attacking. They keep applying pressure. And now GG G2 have got it all to do, Shogun. They needed that first goal to re-establish the belief. They've got the game! Here comes BDS, but that is just a monster clear. Then you're going to wait for the midfield. 
Caleb. This is what BDF's doing their best. BDF's challenging G2 so quickly. G2 needs to play so fast in response. Be the extra touch there by Beast Mode, nearly catching BDF's off guard. Drali takes it to the end. Who takes challenge? He's got a goal! He's in front of the ball, even if there was a defender in the way, he might be bumping them. BDS, a minute and 29 seconds away from the World Championship. G2 responded early last time. This kickoff, not quite as well done. A minute and a half before Milky Moon is a two-time World Champion. Atomic, can't go to follow me, can got the fake out. The Sony players committed, Beast Moon, oh! Seconds and G2 have to find the 